Hello everyone, this is Neil from Eduaka and welcome to this session on Blockchain Wallet. Now without wasting any time, let's move forward and look at today's agenda to get a better understanding of what we'll be covering as part of this session. Now the first thing we'll try to understand is why do we actually need a blockchain wallet as such? Okay, when there are different types of wallet present there, why do we specifically need a wallet that stores our bitcoins? Moving on from there, we'll talk about what exactly is a blockchain wallet and we'll look at the various features of a blockchain wallet. Once you've seen these features, we'll talk about the various types of wallet that are present in today's market. Now there are different types of wallet that are available today. So we'll compare some of the most popular wallets and help you get a better understanding as to which meets your requirement. Finally, as part of today's demo session, we'll be looking at how you can buy bitcoins and how you can transact these bitcoins using different wallets as such. Now I hope you guys are definitely excited for today's session. So let's move forward to today's first topic that is why do we need a blockchain wallet? Now, first thing that comes to your mind is why do we need a specific Bitcoin wallet? Now, again, what you need to understand is that Bitcoin is a digital cryptocurrency. So to handle these cryptocurrencies, to store them and as well as manage the transactions, initiate the transactions as such, you need a specific type of wallet. And that's exactly what your blockchain wallet is. Now, apart from that, most people usually have multiple blockchain accounts. Okay, So each account correspondingly could have a different amount of Bitcoins present in it. Now this is a general policy most people actually follow. Now in that case, using the same blockchain wallet, you can store all these accounts and ensure that you have complete access to your accounts as well as balance. Apart from that, these blockchain wallets in itself help you instantaneously perform transactions. Now once you have the address of the person whom you want to send the bitcoins to, then it's just a matter of copy pasting it, specifying the amount of bitcoins you want to send and then just clicking on send. And the transaction in itself is quite instantaneous as such. Finally comes the concept of transaction. Now always it's important that you keep a track of all the transactions that you do. Now once you have linked all your blockchain accounts to a single blockchain wallet in itself, it becomes quite easy for you to keep track of all the transactions that you have performed. Now take an example of online wallets like blockchain info. Here all the transactions from when you have created your wallet are available. Now this basically gives you a complete idea of how much you earned, whom you've sent to what, as well as all the references and the transaction details as well. Okay, now moving on, let's try to understand what exactly is a blockchain wallet. It's basically similar to a bank account. Okay, like how you have a PayPal account, how you have a bank account associated with Bank of America, ICICI, HDFC and so forth. Your blockchain wallet also is equal to a bank account itself. Here what happens is you use the specific blockchain account or blockchain wallet to send, receive and store your bitcoins as such. Okay, so again similar functions to your bank account itself. Now again how it is different is that instead of actually sending currency, here you're sending bitcoins. But the value of bitcoins is something that is not constant. It keeps changing with respect to the current value of bitcoins as such. Now more people invest into bitcoins, more will the value of bitcoins increase. More people pull out from it, more will the value reduce as such. Now this is one of the major contributing factor that decides the value of bitcoins as such. Because the bitcoin and blockchain system is something that's completely built on no trust model. You don't need to put your trust on someone else to understand. Now we need to understand that here more and more people invest into the system, more and more will the value keep growing. And this is one of the greatest contributing factors for the growth of bitcoins. It's grown over 650% at least in the past year itself. Great. Now, moving forward, let's try to understand the various features of a blockchain wallet. How does it separate it from the other wallets that are present in the market for storing digital currency? Now, the first and the foremost feature is the security feature. In comparison to most other digital wallets, blockchain wallets have multiple layers of security. Apart from that, even initiating a transaction involves certain levels of step. You're going to have to enter your PIN that is associated for the wallet. You may have to enter a passphrase if required. If it's a hardware wallet, you need to actually specify. You need to actually confirm the transaction on the hardware wallet and so forth. Again, in comparison to most other wallets out there, the number of security layers associated with a blockchain wallet is quite high as well. And apart from that, the blockchain system in itself is something that is completely built on various security techniques. So this ensures that even the transactions themselves are completely secure. But one thing you need to remember is that the transactions in a blockchain ledger are not reversible. That is, if you've initiated a transaction to a wrong person, then you cannot recover the bitcoins that you have sent. Always ensure that you're sending the bitcoins to the correct address. 
Apart from that, the next feature would be the instantaneous transaction feature. Now again, as I had mentioned to you, the transactions here are quite instantaneous. You don't need to wait for a long time for the transaction to complete or for a confirmation to come. Now if you work with bank transactions, there are times when you initiate a transaction but have to wait till the banking hours for the transaction to get completed and verified as such. But here the transaction can be initiated 24 hours and 7 days a week and you don't need to even worry about the delay with respect to the transactions. Now, one major factor with respect to the blockchain wallet is that it lets you convert your bitcoins into different cryptocurrencies as well as you can sell out your bitcoins into any currency that you want. Now as far for today's session I'll be showing you how we can buy bitcoins using Indian rupees then I'll also show you how you can convert bitcoins to ethereum on the blockchain info wallet. Finally comes the use of accessibility. Now again as I had mentioned bitcoin wallets are present in multiple platforms. Okay? You can have your wallet present on a piece of paper, it could be present on a hardware device, it could also be on your phone. So at any given instant you have the complete access to your wallet and it becomes easy for you also to check up your balance, you can also validate your transactions and immediately also initiate any transactions as per your requirements as such. Finally let's move forward and talk about the various types of wallet that are present with respect to blockchain wallet. Now it's essentially important that you understand the different types of wallet that are present so that you can go on to decide which wallet suits your requirement as such. Now the first category of wallets are based on the location of the private key. That is where exactly is the private key associated to your wallet being stored. Now when we talk about a hot wallet, this is basically a blockchain program wherein the private key is completely stored on a cloud based server. So you don't need to worry about where it's being stored because what happens is it's present on the cloud and anytime you want to access it you can go on to the website of the blockchain wallet and immediately access it as per your requirements as such. The second type is called a cold wallet. Now here how it's slightly different is that you have an application that runs on either your device or it could be a hardware wallet as such. What you need to do is that all the transaction related details that is the private key, the sender's key, apart from that the amount, everything is going to get first hashed and only the transaction hash is going to get propagated throughout the network. So this ensures that the details with respect to the user is secure as such. Now in comparison to security feature, cold wallets are considered to be more secure than hot wallets because again you have the complete control with respect to your private key. But at the same time in terms of accessibility, hot wallets are more easily accessible as well as the speed of transaction with respect to a hot wallet is quite faster when compared to a cold wallet as such. Then you have based on the devices and clients. Let's first talk about the devices. You can either go for an online web wallet. Here what happens is the wallet is actually present online. That is it's a web based wallet wherein all your keys would be stored on a cloud based server. Apart from that you have mobile wallets. Now here what happens is usually the private keys are stored on your phone as well as it's linked to a web based server. Now on the web based server based on the application there would be a copy of the private key or it could just be stored on your phone whereas the transaction details would be propagated on the cloud servers. Then you have desktop wallets. Now desktop wallets are basically an extension to your cloud based wallet but what happens here is that it is actually a cold wallet rather than a hot wallet because all the details with respect to your private key, your transactions, everything is stored on the wallet and is not directly accessible to a third party professional. Now, Again you need to understand that all the details are present on an application. It's only the final hash value that is going to get propagated through the cloud based server or on the blockchain server itself. Finally you have physical wallets. Now physical wallets are something like your security mission. You can have your physical wallet either present in form of a bitcoin card. It could also be a paper wallet as such where you're storing your bitcoins in a piece of paper. Okay now this is a simple example of how a paper wallet would look like as well as a bitcoin card. Now apart from that physical wallets are also usually used to store bitcoins for future purposes as well. So let's say you want to save up some bitcoins in case of some emergency, physical wallets are one of the best choices as such. Now moving on let's talk about blockchain wallets based on clients as such. You can either have a software client wherein it could be a desktop application, it could be a cloud based application, mobile application or so forth or you can go with a hardware wallet as such. Now again as I had mentioned it's based on the user's requirement that you can choose one or the other. Now let's compare some of the most popular wallets that are present in today's market. Okay, So we are going to compare five of these popular wallets and each of them come from a different category as such. Now the first wallet that we'll be talking about is Bitcoin Core. 
Now this was the core wallet introduced by Bitcoin.org and is one of the most secure as well as stable wallet in the market today. What you need to understand is that while you're using this wallet, it completely downloads the entire blockchain. That is, you get the complete blockchain downloaded on your system. So thereby, it becomes a very huge wallet. Given today's size, it's close to about 130 GB that gets downloaded when you're working with Bitcoin Core Wallet. But with respect to the space and the memory constraint, also comes the feature of security, privacy and stability with respect to it. So this is one of the most popular wallets that had been initially introduced. Coming on to the next wallet that is Tensor. Tensor is again one of the most popular wallets as a hardware wallet. Okay, now again with respect to hardware wallet security, this is again one of the major players in the market today. And it also comes with respect to a display as well as two keys which will help you verify as well as adds another layer of protection for your blockchain wallet. Now again, when you talk about the security feature with respect to Tensor or any hardware wallet, it's very high in comparison to all other wallets. But again, with respect to ease of use, it's not that comfortable when you're on the go or when you want to immediately initiate a transaction. These are not very comfortable for that. Okay. Coming down to the next wallet is Blockchain Info Wallet. Now, Blockchain Info Wallet is one of the most popular online wallets present today. It has close to about 8 million different users as such. Now, it also supports both Bitcoins and Ethereum and helps you convert your Bitcoins to Ethereum and vice versa which we'll be seeing as part of today's demo as such. Now, apart from that, it also offers one of the cheapest transaction fees for initiating any transaction as such. Like, let me just give you an example. Let's say if you want to send about 2,500 rupees on a non PCR time, it costs you somewhere about 4 rupees as such as the transaction fees. And at the same time, if you want to make the transaction a priority transaction, the transaction fee slightly increases to about 41 rupees. Now, again, this is a very small fees that gets included when you see the overall transaction fees with respect to the different forms of transactions that are available today. Okay. Next, we have Electrum. Electrum is again a very popular desktop based wallet and is known for its security feature as well. Now, in terms of speed as well as simplicity, it is one of the most popular ones as such with respect to desktop wallets. There are various features with respect to Electrum. So, I would definitely recommend if you're looking for a desktop wallet, this is one that you should definitely put your eyes on. But again, one thing you need to remember is that Electrum has slightly higher transaction fees when you compare with respect to the other desktop wallets as such. Moving on, Mycelium. Mycelium is one of the most popular mobile wallets which is present for both Android and iOS. Okay, Here you have the complete access to your private keys and it does not leave your device unless and until you wish it to. So as I had mentioned to you, this is an example of a cold wallet. Here the private key details are stored on your device as such and unless and until you want it to be migrated, it does not get migrated. Now there are people who want to constantly keep checking their Bitcoin wallets for an update with respect to the value of Bitcoin. So Mycelium also offers you an option of watch only address where you can keep checking the value of Bitcoins associated in your wallet without having actually to log into your wallet as such. Okay. So I hope you've got a simple understanding with respect to the different types of wallets as well as the comparison between the most popular wallets in today's market. Now you can go on to choose whichever wallet meets your requirement and for today's demo session what we'll be doing is we'll be buying bitcoins using the ZebPay mobile application okay wherein I'll be buying bitcoins and then I'll be initiating a transaction from my ZebPay mobile application to my blockchain info wallet which is an online based wallet. There I'll also show you how you can convert your bitcoins to Ethereum as such. Okay, so I hope you guys are definitely looking forward to this. Moving on first, what you need to do is that you need to go on to Google Play Store and download your ZebPay application from Google Play Store. In case if you're looking to buy Bitcoins in India, then this is one of the best choices that I can suggest you with. Okay, so once you've done with that, let me just go on and show you how you can buy Bitcoins and I'll give you a simple overview of how ZebPay works. Now this is the ZebPay Google App Store download page. Okay. So you can go on to download the application and this is the Apple Store download link for ZebPay. Okay, now let me just show you how ZebPay looks like. Now this is a ZebPay interface on an Android application. Now since I am using an Android application, you can see this is how it looks like. Okay, so let me just go to the buy option here. Okay, now as you can see, I've already loaded some money into it. Let me just give you a simple overview with respect to the application before we go on. Okay, so if you go to the menu option here, you can see there are different things here. First thing that you need to do after you've installed the application is go to the verification option and here what you need to do is that you need to provide your personal details as well as your PAN card details. Apart from that, you need to give your bank details. 
Now every time that you wish the balance amount, that is what you've, the amount that you've gained after selling your bitcoins to be transferred to your bank, then you need to provide the corresponding bank details. Apart from that, you need to provide your address details in case of verification as such. Now once you've completed the verification process, which usually takes a day to three days, then you have the access to buy and sell bitcoins as per your need. Now first thing what you need to do once your verification is complete, is that click on the deposit option to deposit a specific amount into your Zepay wallet as such. Okay, so you have two ways to transfer the money. Either you can use net banking or you can go with RTGS, NEFT or IFBS. Now I would recommend going through net banking because it's faster and you can definitely get started immediately. Okay, once you've done that, you can see the corresponding balance being reflected here. Now let me go on to buy bitcoins as per my need. So if I click on buy option present here, then it's going to redirect me to the option to buy the bitcoins. Okay, now one thing you need to keep in mind is that Zepbit buys as well as sells bitcoins on a higher rate when compared to the market present trends. Okay, this is mainly because they keep a buffer with respect to the current rates as such in case of a fluctuation with respect to that same. Now again, the minimum amount that you can buy bitcoins for is 1000 and it can go up to 10 lakhs as such. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll use the complete amount here. So let's say I'm going to use 3258. Okay, and then it's telling me I can buy 0 0.1 Bitcoin given the present rate as such. So let me just click on buy option and it is going to ask me for a security pin. Now this is another thing that you would be setting up while you're installing the application. Always ensure you remember your pin associated with respect to your wallet. If I click, I specify my pin as such, the transaction gets initiated and immediately the bitcoins get added to my wallet. Okay, now if you can see, I had earlier zero bitcoins present. Now I have 0 0.1 bitcoin present here. Now given at any instance, I want to sell my bitcoins, I can just click on the sell option and it's going to give me the present rate and it tells me how much I can sell my bitcoins for. So if I click on sell all, it's going to tell me the corresponding value as well. Okay, now it's time that we initiate a transaction with respect to our Zepay application. Now for this, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use my Zepay wallet, which has 0 0.1 Bitcoin and I'm going to send it to my blockchain wallet. Now here, if I, you have the option to either receive Bitcoins or you can send Bitcoins by selecting one of these two options. Now first thing I want to do is that I want to send Bitcoins. So let me just click on send. Now here it's going to ask me whether it's to a specific contact in my wallet or I'm going to specify the corresponding address. Now in this case, I'm going to specify the address. So I'm going to click the B icon present here. Once I do that, it's going to ask me for the name as well as the address. So here you can see the address has been specified. So let me just call this my wallet one. Okay. Apart from that, most wallet these days also have a QR code associated for their wallets. So you can even scan the QR code rather than entering it manually. Okay. Now, once I click on the tick mark present here, you can see below here, it's going to ask me how many Bitcoins do I want to send. Now I'm going to click on send all. Okay. So here you can see it's taking a corresponding transaction fees associated for my Bitcoins as well. Earlier where I had almost 0 0.1 Bitcoins, now it's come down. This is because of Bitcoin network transaction fees. Now, if you see here, these are the standard transaction fees associated with respect to the Bitcoins. They may change slightly depending on the traffic as such. Now, once I click on send all option and I click on the op icon present here, it's going to again ask me for the pin. So I specify my pin and it has initiated a transaction with respect to my Bitcoins. Now, let me go back and show you. Okay, I see, you can see I've got a message that tells me that my bitcoins have been sent from my wallet as well. So this is one of the major factors which I would recommend you to go with Zepay as such. Okay. Now this is my blockchain info wallet and this is a completely cloud based wallet here. Okay. So here are all my recent bitcoin transactions, my present transactional value. That is there's no bitcoins present at the moment. So it's showing me the balance to be zero. Okay. Now again, now they've recently started an option to buy and sell bitcoins through these blockchain wallet itself. Apart from that, as I had mentioned, they support both Bitcoins as well as Ethers as such. Okay, so I've got a notification that says I've received Bitcoins. So let me just go to my Bitcoin dashboard. Okay, let me just go to my home dashboard that is. So here you can see I have 0.955576 Bitcoins, but the value is low. This is mainly because the Bitcoin info wallet actually is going with the current value of 2,96,000 for the present value of a Bitcoin. Whereas on Zepay, it was close to 3,22,000. Now that is mainly because the difference as I had mentioned. So they keep a buffer difference with respect to that same. Okay. 
now this is my corresponding value in Bitcoin so let me just convert show you how you can convert these Bitcoins to Ethereum as well so here you have the option of converting all your existing Bitcoins to Ethereum on the blockchain info wallet itself so let's say if I put 0 0.00 okay and it tells me that the minimum limit is 0 0.000143 Bitcoins okay which is correspondingly equivalent to 40 rupees in Indian rupees as such okay so let me just change it to 0 0.1 now it tells me I have only so many bitcoins and I can only convert this so once I click on this option then it converts this to ethereum okay so 0 0.009 bitcoins is equivalent to 0 0.127 ethereum as such again this is majorly because the price difference with respect to that same now wherein a bitcoin is close to 3 lakhs and ethereum is just worth 21,000 rupees Okay, I have standardly kept the currency to be rupees because rupees is where I would be working out with. Now, once I click on next, the conversion actually starts. Okay, now one interesting fact about the same is that there is a time frame associated with respect to the quote with respect. Because the value of Bitcoins and Ethereum are constantly changing, you can see here it's fixed a specific value for my Bitcoins, it's fixed a specific value for my Ethereum, it's also kept a constant exchange rate with respect to that. There's an associated transaction fees as well as a withdrawal fees as well. Now I've agreed to the condition. Shapeshift is one of the most popular platform which helps you convert your cryptocurrencies between each other. Okay, so once I click on confirm, correspondingly the transaction is going to get initiated and the exchange has successfully taken place. Now again, this may take some time with respect to that and the corresponding conversion would get reflected here. Now if you see here, this is also considered to be a transaction. Okay, now at any point if I want to see the status of this, just click on the arrow mark here which will redirect me to blockchain.info website wherein it will show me the status of the transaction as well. So you can see the status of any transaction and if you've attended my previous session, you might be aware that any transactions using Bitcoins is visible to everyone across the globe. So all you need is the transaction ID associated and you can completely view transactions involving Bitcoin. But here again, it's using my public key, thereby ensuring that no one can actually know who is dealing with respect to these Bitcoins. So your identity is completely anonymous. Now with this, we come to a conclusion of today's session. We started talking with respect to why you need to use a blockchain wallet. What exactly is a blockchain wallet? Then we saw the various features of blockchain wallet as well as we saw the different types of wallet. After that, we compared five of the most popular wallets in the market today and we saw a demo on how you can buy Bitcoins and perform a transaction using them. We also saw how you can convert Bitcoins to Ethereum as such. Now with this we come to a conclusion of this session. Thank you and goodbye.